Because the war on drugs is just a war on us. And the wrong time to see it is when you win them cuffs. Stick man of dead prez. I have no reason to think that my voice will be any louder or more clear than countless others trying to bring attention to the horrible war on drugs this country has waged on its citizens. Since the banning of opium at the turn of the century, then cocaine and hemp, well before Tricky Dick Nixon coined the term, the war on drugs has been the epitome of everything that is wrong about this country. The war on drugs is unethical, unequal, inhumane, unchristlike, unsuccessful, unscientific, and a bunch of uns and ends the English language hasn't invented yet. Why is this my war, you say? Why should I care? This is why we hire police and correctional officers to take care of bad people so we don't have to deal with them. I want to beg with you. I want to plead with you to see the humanity of your fellow Americans. I figure recognizing the humanity of the Afghans and the Latinos involved in cocaine and poppy trade is too much for xenophobic Americans, but I'm still baffled as to how we can't see the human toll when it hits black people in D.C. on crack or white people in Nebraska on meth. The war on drugs rhetoric has convinced us that these communities deserve to be fatherless and poor due to their own sinfulness. I have nothing new to add to the end the drug war argument, but I do realize that this is a brand new concept for many people. So here's a list of five things you should read or watch to bring you up to speed. It includes one organization, one documentary, one website, one book, and one magazine article. Of course, this is not the definitive list of things to expose yourself to in order to be caught up on the subject, but this is one of the most crucial issues of our generation. Not having an informed opinion on the subject is unacceptable, so you should familiarize yourself with the topic. First, let's talk about LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. You can find them at leap.cc. A major hurdle in ending the war on drugs is dispelling the myth that those against the drug war are just users and enablers making excuses for sin and vice. There is a growing community of law enforcement who agree that our current drug war is counterproductive and inhumane. My friend and creative colleague Jenks Morton put me on to leap last year. Law enforcement against prohibition does not get nearly enough press, especially in an era where whole states are starting to tackle the idea of the human toll of prohibition. This site is a great resource to the anti-prohibition movement and an interesting look at the moral dilemma our more social conscious law enforcement officers are dealing with. The second thing, the house I live in. I have been trying to find ways to watch this movie since I heard about its release last year. I finally got a chance when I paid YouTube a small fee to watch it online, and I suggest you do the same. It would be better if you don't watch it alone because this movie and this topic deserve a good conversation. If you have ever read or researched the war on drugs or the prison industrial complex, the material in The House I Live In is nothing new, but it's probably the best combination of all the statistical, historical, political, scientific information and anecdotal stories I've seen in one place. Director Eugene Jarecki takes us on a journey as he catches up to his childhood nanny, literally named Nanny, and asks her about her family. When he finds out that the black kids that he knew as a child ended up in completely different life paths than him due to their involvement with drugs, he tries to get to the heart of it. A series of interviews with judges, police officers, nonviolent drug offenders, correctional officers, and families of drug offenders take us deep into our current apartheid system like few films before. Number three, stopthedrugwar.org. This is a relative new one for me, even though I was rocking a Stop the Drug War t-shirt since my days in undergrad. In this constantly evolving war to stop a war, I guess it would be easier and more effective to call it the peace on drugs movement, new information is our most valuable asset. This website will keep you up to date on all the latest legal battles, examples of legal overreach, and success stories when it comes to turning back the tide on this awful war. Here is their mission statement. StopTheDrugWar.org works for an end to the drug prohibition worldwide and an end to drug war in its current form. We believe that much of the harm commonly attributed to drugs is really the result of placing drugs in a criminal environment. We believe the global drug war has fueled violence, civil instability, and public health crisis, and that the current prevalent arrest and punishment-based policies toward drugs are unjust. Number four, the new Jim Crow. 
This book by Michelle Alexander has taken the black intellectual world by storm since its release in 2010. Michelle has shot her way quickly up my list of heroes. People who aren't afraid to speak the truth that makes others uncomfortable, that makes society look at themselves and leads government to change are always my favorite people. I'm confident on it. I'm confident that when this war on drugs is over, this is going to be put down in history as one of the most significant publications in bringing that about. Number five, this article from Matt Taibbi in Rolling Stone magazine, the outrageous HSBC settlement proves the drug war is a joke. My feelings for the Obama administration has been documented now in both editorials and songs. It's actually nothing personal against the man, just the realization that he is no different than the 43 others before him when it comes to pandering and selling out the American people for corporate interests. Few things speak to the hypocrisy and oligarchical control of this country than the fact that executives from HSBC were caught red-handed helping drug smugglers launder money not to mention helping Iran move money, but absolutely no one from that organization even had to explain themselves to a judge. The money laundering was so thorough that they literally provided the drug cartels with specially shaped boxes so they could slide their drug money to HSBC tellers more efficiently. This whole scenario makes my blood boil, as well as Mr. Taibbi's, and I would call for the impeachment of the entire administration, except that I know no Democrat or Republican would have behaved any differently. We have never had a problem in this country with feeding peons to the meat grinder while rewarding the diabolical masterminds with more opportunities to exploit us all. Someone from HSBC needs to go to jail. Yesterday. If Ray Ray up the street gets caught with five pounds of marijuana, he is serving a minimum sentence. But if the bankers who help the kingpins launder money get caught, they just find the company and say don't do it again. That is an absolute tragedy, and I am assuming that the rest of America isn't as appalled as I am because they haven't been paying attention. That needs to stop now. This is just the beginning, the beginning of the end of the war on drugs. It can't go on forever, and we cannot wait until another generation gets fed into this meat grinder. Educate yourself, then join us as we bring peace instead of this decade-long war on the American people.